uh, when George Cornell was working for my brother, George Cornell was working in a, a long firm, I think, for my brother, not for me. I split up from my brother in 1963. And we both went our own ways after that. So when Cornell got shot, <coughs> It was two days after we all got shot in Smith's pub, right? So we were in a hospital or whatever, and, uh, and that's when Ronnie Cray killed George Cornell, because he, he didn't have any uh, sort of protection around him, did he, at the time? With all us being in hospital and in prison. So, uh, that's when that happened. In the blind beggars, yeah. I can't hear you. George Cornell was brought up with the twins. He was brought up with them. He knew them very well and he used to slag them off terrible in pubs and places that he went. So I suppose of all people that they didn't really want about, it was George Cornell. So that's why George Cornell got shot. Eddie, um, when your prison attempt, well, your, your escape at the uh, bow from Leicester prison, you had the two cars waiting, obviously you must have had a plan, you couldn't, you couldn't have gone back to you. To your old manor, you must have had a plan to go somewhere else in the world, probably. Maybe, maybe it might have been North Cyprus because it's pretty lax. Um, but where did, did you have anywhere else plans to go? Yeah, I did actually. I had a, a farm in Wales. My friend had a friend that had a little farm in Wales, and that's where I was going to go for. First of all, if the escape was successful. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions? Don't be shy. Someone over there, do you want to take the mic? Okay. Up in on Jeremy Kyle. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Eddie, can you tell, in your, uh, both your legitimate and your less legitimate business activities, how much of your success relied upon dishonest police officers? Uh, well, <laughs> we're going back a long time, so it's a different culture entirely now to what it was in them days. In my day, everyone looked after themselves much more than they did now. They didn't have such things as mobile phones, taking cameras, photographs, things like that. You had to find a phone box that worked. If you was lucky, if you wanted to make a phone call. So people looked after themselves much more in them days than what they do now. Nowadays, they got cameras on the corner of all sorts of streets. They got <coughs> videos, everything. You know, it's a different, a different world entirely now. Yeah. Do you think it's safer now then, or it was safer then? I mean, people said, you know, the East End and South London was a safer place when you and the Crays were around. Do you believe that? Uh, it's debatable. It's debatable whether things are better or worse. They always say, yeah, it was better in my day, because when people think back, when they was youngsters, it was a great time, wasn't it? Youth. You know, I mean, you had your youth and that, it always seemed better them days, didn't it? Oscar Wilde once made a statement and he said, what a pity that youth is wasted on the young. Yeah. Uh, I think I've got a question, and with this is saying that we all make mistakes. I'm asking you very sincerely, Yes. Have you got any regrets and would you do it differently? Um, Anything. You've yeah. obviously been looked after your family, but I'm talking about anything at all. 
everybody would have regrets, everybody, and uh, do things slightly different to what they maybe would have done at the time. But to be quite honest, I am more thinking about tomorrow than rather than yesterday, and um, you know, I'm still a bit positive in life. Uh, and I sell paintings and prints off of my website, you know, and so I'm still, even though I'm getting on quite a bit, uh, still a bit active and uh, getting myself a few quid. <laughs> So far we've listened to you and you've made the story of your life sound like a, a Boy Scouts camp. However, if you go onto the internet and look at your life there, you will find quite a number of stories relating to the violence that you've created during the course of your lifetime. One that comes to mind is a case of what was called the pension collector. The pension collector is a euphemism for protectionism, where the protectionist on this particular occasion went to either the horses or the dogs and lost all the money. When he was found, he was nailed down to the floor and his toes were cut off with bolt cutters. How do you justify that, Mr. Richardson? I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, to be quite honest. I think you should do your research a bit better. I think you might find that as a craze, darling. <laughs> Yeah, a lot, a lot of people have said that choking is really very, very difficult to deal with within prison. Um, I, I've spoken to a bloke who was in Parkhurst, um, probably about not far different time to you, and there was a very brave Buddhist monk who came in there and taught in meditation. I just wonder what you managed to do to, to deal with that awful problem of being by yourself with nothing else. Um. <coughs> I was, uh, when I was in Leicester Prison, there used to be a priest, uh, a priest come in from outside, 